Hello everyone. Today is a special day for the family. We are moving out of Samoa and back to Melbourne in Australia. We have lived in Samoa for two years and have started to pack up all of our things. When the day came, all of us had a lot of feelings about moving back. I always knew I was going to go back, so I'm happy that I'm going back but to see my friends, but I'm also sort of sad because I'm meeting the friends here that I've made. I feel a lot of different things about going back uh, to Australia. Excited. A bit anxious, a little stressed. Yeah, I guess those are the three main things, really. A little sad as well. I feel a bit sad. Sad to leave Samoa. Sad to leave my parents. I feel a bit concerned. So I've got lots of stuff I've got to do when I get back to Melbourne. Things I've got to sort out. I don't really like going on planes that much. So I'll be glad when plane rides are over. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how everything goes. Are you excited to go on an airplane? Yes. Yeah, and airplane's loud. The person narrating this documentary is Messina Taule Allo, who is the oldest child of this family. I feel a bit excited that I'm moving back because I know a lot of things in Melbourne would have changed since I lived in Samoa, and I am excited to see those changes. I will be surprised of the appearance, weather, schools, traffic, the tram network, the road networks, the train stations, and more interestingly, trains themselves. I might have feelings about moving back as well as my family members, but the owners of the house, who are known as Sarah's parents or Messina's grandparents, have feelings too. Well, I, on a, an intellectual level, I, I understand that this has to be because Messina needs to do get ready for tertiary education, so he needs to do his final year at school, and the children need to go to, to school. Vanya needs to go to school. Then. I think that Litara could have continued her education here and got a scholarship to go overseas, but that's not going to be. I feel very sad on a personal level, however, because although we've had our ups and downs living together in one house, because we've been on our own for 17 years, we love our, our family very much, and it's going to be a, you know, very, very sad saying goodbye to them. It's uh, quite sad to see all of you going back to Melbourne, living somewhere. But I can fully understand why you have to get back now, particularly with uh, your education and Vanya's education, which is not available here in Samoa. So, yes, uh, it's very sad to sit as I said, but you know, at the same time, it's good to have you guys here. For I hope that uh, in the future it can happen again. Sada's parents are a bit sad that we are leaving their home because we have been doing a lot of fun things with them and they have been around us for a long time. When we first moved to Samoa, we adapted to life there and we also had thoughts about how we felt living in Samoa. I felt a bit happy but annoyed at the same time. There was very hot weather and less internet access. Good. I'm happy that I I'm happy that I stayed here for two years because I am from here. My dad's from here, so I'm happy that I could see where he grew up the first 13 years of his life, and I'm happy that I can have the experience of the Samoan culture and its people and stuff. I guess I sort of felt the same things that I said before about going back. I was a bit excited, a bit nervous, a bit anxious, curious because I've been here a couple times before, but I've never fully lived here before. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, a lot of different things. I felt happy that you guys got to live in Samoa for a little bit, see what it was like in my country. Yeah, it was good to be able to hang out with my parents for a bit and spend some time with them. It's a very different life here to the life we used to live in Melbourne. So it's good for you guys to see what it's like over here. We felt happy when we moved to Samoa because we got to learn about Samoan culture, tradition, the family business and where Sedu grew up. We felt happy about learning their culture. However, Sedu's parents have feelings about us living in Samoa. Yeti and I both wanted you all to experience Samoa. We feel sad that Clarissa and, and Cooper have not come to Samoa for holidays. And so they really don't understand that part of their identity. But we are hoping that particularly you and Itara, because you're older, will now appreciate some of the things in, in Samoa, living in a, a third world country, it driving you nuts because you couldn't get the internet, those types of frustrations, not having the, I call the muchness of a big city in terms of 
book where you can shop some of the things you can do but maybe just enjoying some of the simple pleasures in life like you Messina have enjoyed the landscape you've enjoyed just walking along a beach it's a slower pace of life which probably doesn't suit a young teenage boy you've lost I think some of your independence with your bike rides but hopefully other things that you've experienced will enrich your life as you grow older. I think that Litara has gained a lot from being in a school with a lot of Samoan kids and she's obviously made some very sweet friendships with, with the girls that she was at school with and she has, I think, absorbed a lot of the way she behave in a Samoan situation. She was able to show that when she was also sitting in the whale at for Setu's pair. She has a, a, a sensitivity for Samoa that she would not have before because the way we deal with people in Samoa is quite different to the way we deal with people overseas. So I'm hoping that these things two older children will enjoy and we're very happy that you've experienced it. For the for the little ones, they've been to a Samoan Montessori, Montessori preschool and I think that it's been absolutely enchanting hearing them sing the Samoan national anthem and a lot of Samoan songs that they have learnt. They won't remember Samoa necessarily at all, but we've loved watching them play, we've loved watching them interact with people here. So we're very happy that four kids came here. I'm also very happy that Francis came here too because I think that when you come to another country and see where your husband grew up a lot of his childhood and where, where we are, it's very much a part of Setu's life think that Frances coming here that will enable her to understand set her much more as a, as a person. So I'm hoping that for all of you, you will take away some things that have enriched you. Naturally you'll take away some negative things, but I'm hoping that the overall memories of your time in Samoa will be positive. It is great. You know, it's uh, really nice to have your family living in Samoa. You know, when you have uh, a lot of people living together, there will always be some disagreements and a few conflicts of uh, personalities. But but overall, it's been very good. Uh, you know, as we learn to manage our living together situation, we got better and started to and, and went on to live as a family, a real family. Three generations of one family, grandparents, uh, parents and grandchildren. So it's good, it's good. When we move out of Samoa, there are lots of things we are going to miss. My friends, my family. <laughs> Probably like the people, they're just, they're just so nice and people here and they're, like, they're just so calm and nice and Australia, everyone's so white and grumpy all the time and rushing and so shit. I'm gonna miss the palm trees that grow here, the cafe food I usually eat all the time, the ocean that I see most of the time, and the best buses they have there. They're so colourful seeing them go by every now and then, but they're not legal in Australia. I'm going to miss the people. I'm gonna miss grandma and granddad and Maui. Vivau, I'm gonna miss going to Vivau. I'm not much of a beach person in Melbourne, but I love going to the beach here in Samoa and I'm really gonna miss going to the beach here. I'm gonna miss working at Legends and seeing, you know, cracking jokes with Ben and Sealy and Namu. I'm gonna miss those guys. Some of the customers, I liked seeing some of the customers. It was nice when people would come to the cafe and talk about our food and they all really liked it. And it was nice to sort of feel proud about people enjoying our product. I'm gonna miss my parents. I just miss the life here. Very different to Australia. City life is kind of stressful, so it's a bit more laid back here, which I like. I'm gonna miss the dogs in Maui as well, even just working at the shop. Are you going to miss some uh, more? No, me. No? No. It's okay, don't worry about it. I'm gonna miss Maui a little bit. Yeah. Even though we are going to miss the people, Soda's family and the cafe, his family is also going to miss us. We'll miss each and every one of you for your own special unique qualities. I will miss your sense of humour. I will miss your random questions, whatever is going on inside your head and your imagination. You pop up with some pretty amazing questions and propositions, especially to do with movies and, and slapstick. And I will miss probably even some of your annoying because they are unique to you and they make you who you are. 
and over over time we get used to those and we find them rather gorgeous so each one of you has got qualities that we will miss you know even I think Vanya over the time has got to be much more comfortable with us very for me she's she's affectionate and story time has been always something where we enjoy meeting at the end of the day and, and telling stories so I think there's going to be a lot of things that we miss we haven't been able to come to the beach with you the last few times because of the car situation but those beach days at Baval were, were very magical as well so I can count everything that is going to be missing you even Messina plodding up and down the stairs making lots of noise probably sometimes I will wish to hear that noise as, as well we, we will miss uh, the opportunity to stay with you with you here in Samoa. It's been two years since we have uh, spent time together. So, so we'll miss all that. Uh, we've seen how you guys, uh, grandchildren, have, have, have grown. When Bania first came here, she, she very much kept to herself. Now she's able to communicate and to get on with uh, other people. She has conversational skills. Right. She's really developed uh, the communication skills, uh, which is looks much, which is much better than, she, uh, than it was when she first came. She has of course grown well. We miss seeing her grow up. Uh, generally, you know, we, we will miss family going back to Baden, but we can understand why you you have to go back uh, as soon as possible. It seems that when we leave Samoa, we are all going to miss each other. But when we arrive back in Melbourne, there are lots of things we will look forward to. What I'm looking forward to moving back is the internet, because here it's really shit. So I'm happy that I can go back and get more internet and see my friends that I haven't seen in two years. I think I'm going to look forward to my bicycle trips, the new train stations that are in Melbourne and going back to my school because I haven't been there for a while. I don't know if it's silly or not, but I'm looking forward to having my brand of soy milk. <laughs> Buy the soy. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to once we've found a house, we've got a car and all that stuff's moved in and everything's set up and we're having our first day or our first night and we'll put some music on, all the kids' rooms are sorted out. Hopefully the shipping will be there so we've got a computer. All of our stuff is totally, totally set up and our first full night back in our new house, all of our stuff. That's, I think that's probably the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. I'm looking forward to everything being sorted out in the next few months or so. When we've got the house and we're sort of settled a bit and I'm working. We are all looking forward towards having better internet and a good house. Soda's parents are also looking forward to similar things. Not really. It might be, it, it will be a very quiet house. It will be very empty. So these things I don't think one does look forward to. When you first came, the noise in the house after being just two people took quite a bit of getting used to, especially the girls high pitch squealing. But no, I think it's lovely to hear kids running around and playing and in their funny little ways. So I think that maybe sometimes we can be quite selfish and have a bit more quietness, but no, I don't really think that I look forward to anything about this ex physical space once you've gone. Because it's big enough that it fits us all anyway. I think I'm going to miss Messina flying into our lives and around the lounge asking questions. It's going to be huge. I look forward to get on with uh, our lives here with, with, with uh, Maranya. I also look forward to hear uh, how you guys are getting on in our See uh, what uh, you're going to, to do with your schools and uh, what you hope to achieve with your life as, as, you, get, as you get older and get on to the end of your schools. And I also look forward to buying uh, to Francis and Seto, you know, uh, looking and developing their work and professional careers as uh, they get older. So yes, I look uh, forward to all those things. As well, I also want to look forward to Tara's progress and see how she gets on with high school in, uh, next year. As well, I'm interested to, to see how Tiva and Young Vanya, Little Vanya gets on with their, with their schools and their studies as they get up grow older.
so his parents know that there will be less noise in the house when we leave. We have a lot of suitcases and we are packing a lot of things. We are packing clothes, books, DVDs, technology and some things that can't fit in our suitcases. Where we are packing our big things is inside this wooden crate right outside here. We're using the crate to basically take over all of our really big things like the TV, computer, synthesizer, the controller, some of the bigger toys of the girls, lots of books and mainly toys other than that but it's for the big stuff. We pack the TV, the synthesizer, the MIDI controller, the computer, the speakers, small electric keyboard and heaps of other stuff, whatever we could cram in there really. A scooter for Tiva. Right, is big stuff that we can't put in our suitcases because it just costs too much money and it's too heavy. So my stuff that they're putting in the crate, I think they're putting in one of my big high heels and like a metal tree where you hang your earrings. I can't put that in my suitcase, so they're gonna put it in the crate. And I think that's all they're putting in the crate. We are packing bigger technology, speakers, keyboards, the television and toys for the little girls inside the crate because none of the big things can fit in our suitcases. So what we are doing today is packing up our things and tomorrow We're gonna go to the airport Going on the aeroplanes And aeroplanes now It is going to be a long flight but Isn't it great to go in Melbourne? Once we arrive in Melbourne, we are going to stay at a friend's house Going to our meet house. And we are going to look for our own house to live in. I hope you guys enjoy this big documentary I have made. Good morning everyone, it is Sunday morning on the 9th of December 2018. We all woke up at 3 o'clock, we packed up all of our bags and we are checking our suitcases. Sarah's parents are helping us out with the suitcases because there are a lot of them which are hard to handle. Sarah's parents are sad that we are already leaving but we are still going to be in touch with them sometime. After 15 minutes of packing, all of us got in two cars and started to pull out of the driveway. Okay. I'm not doing the goat. We had to leave super early because Messina's parents booked a ticket for a plane that was leaving at 6 o'clock bound for Sydney. Now as crazy as it seems, every single international flight in Salm will leave at those crazy times. We woke up and left for the airport really early because the plane left at quarter past six. So we had to be at the airport at quarter past four, which meant we had to wake up at about two, leave for the airport at about 3.30. It was not a lot of sleep. A lot of the time in Samoa they have flights like that. They're very, very crazy times of the, of the morning. During our drive to the airport, we had to drive a bit slow because people drive slow in Samoa. However, we came behind a slow driver, whom said it refers to as a crawler, even though cars do not crawl.
Once we arrived at the airport, we started to unpack all of our suitcases and when we were done, we took the suitcases to the gate check-in. To be honest, it was harder to film and push the trolley at the same time. Anyways, the plane we are going to catch is the VA-78 plane to Sydney, where we are going to get a connecting flight to Melbourne. Messina had brought a metal drink bottle with him and we were informed that liquid is not allowed on the plane, so Messina had to empty his entire drink bottle out into the bathroom sink. After Messina emptied his drink bottle, he came back and the rest of the family were saying goodbye to Sodu's parents and were hugging each other. All the best, my gorgeous boy. Uh -huh. Love you. Yeah, I'm not you too far, yeah. All the best. Get some cuddle for granddad. Oh. After the family said their goodbyes, we went to the security to get our bags checked. Messina couldn't film his bags or himself getting checked. After getting our bags and ourselves through security, we went to the passport check so we can go into the plane gates. After checking in our passports, we were on our way to the gates where we will wait for our plane. The plane we are catching is departing at 6.15 at gate 2. When we were waiting for 30 minutes, our plane was called in and we all went off to board our plane. Messina wasn't allowed to film when the family was boarding the plane as it was against the airport rules, so he started filming again when the family got inside the plane. Mara, yeah. what did you do with your camera? Hi girls. Hey look, it's Messina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> After what seemed like 23 minutes of boarding the plane, the plane started moving, which meant that it was going to depart from the airport and take off. Once we were seated and our bags were put in the overhead lockers, the pilot made an announcement and the flight attendants did the safety demonstration. We may ask for your assistance in retrieving a lot. There's the runway. It looks like that the plane has already come up to the runway. The plane will take off soon, so on this documentary there will be a countdown showing when the plane will take off. The sky is getting a bit of light. During the first half hour of our flight, the sun came out, but it became very bright and we were informed by the flight crew to close our window blinds. Next, we found our food menus and the flight crew gave us our food and drinks. Masina wasn't happy with his food, but he ate it anyway. At one point, Sedu went away for a minute and Masina lounged across the three chairs.
After three point eight hours of flying, the flight crew informed us that we were allowed to open our windows again because the sun was not as bright anymore. Eventually, the plane was starting to get lowered to the ground and we saw some buildings. We have finally reached Sydney. We have left the RP at daylight time zone and we have entered the Australian Eastern Daylight Time Zone. So it is 12.14 in Samoa, but it is 9.14 in Sydney. So we have entered three hours behind of time. So did lived in Sydney when he was a teenager. So finally back, we're back in Australia, in the wrong city that you used to live in. After we landed, the pilot made an announcement welcoming us to Sydney and thanked us for travelling with Virgin Airlines. After what seemed like 54 minutes of taxi, the plane had finally reached its gate. Kevin good this on the Dozen Crossing, thank you. We got off the front jetway off the plane and headed along the airport. However, once we were inside Sydney Airport, we went through a series of stressful and embarrassing situations. When we got to border security, we found ourselves that there was a no filming policy, even though there weren't any signs. So when Messina was filming, he was informed by one of the guards to not film and actually delete the footage of the border check. Messina thought that wasn't true and got pissed off. And when his parents told him so, he thought that they were denying his documentary, but realized it sooner or later. His parents were angry too and told him to put his camera away until we got out of the border security, mainly because they were embarrassed over Messina's loud voice. Also, Messina had to push baggage trolleys, making it harder for him to film at the same time. It was a little frustrating because Messina got a bit angry because he was told he wasn't allowed to film. Then he got angry at the border security people <laughs> for telling him not to film. <laughs> Which was, in retrospect, a little bit funny. But we There were, are signs. Yeah, but we just wanted to basically get through because there were heaps of people there. We were kind of up the front and we didn't want to cause any dramas. I, mean, I, don't, that, I don't know why you're not allowed to film that. What do you think? Ooh, it's the secret passport checking ritual the terrorists might get us that tall skinny white kids are terrorists <laughs> yeah but even if it was terrorists what would filming the passport checking do it's for later you can film and bomb people because you know bomb people oh, anyway. i don't know <laughs> what are the terrorists gonna do they're gonna be like oh so the people will line up and there'll be counters where they check the passports <laughs> yeah that's a pretty safe bet <laughs> They'll never, if they don't feel it, they'll never know. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Border security may have been in the wrong in this case, but we wanted to follow the rules. And not cause trouble. Or get arrested. Or have Messina get arrested. And then Messina started talking loudly about refugee rights. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. Yeah. <laughs> and how... Did the word fascist come out at some point? I think that was before your fascist stage, but yeah. After we passed border security and collected our luggage, we stopped to eat at a cafe called Hudson's Coffee. Also, Francis and Sadu went away because they had a baby car seat in the plane and it had been missing in the luggage area. Seeing that um, this plane trip is stressful. When Francis and Soto came back, we got food from the cafe. Messine got a solo soda and a strawberry frosted donut. There was still no sign of the baby car seat and we were discussing solutions on what to do with it. So I'm not sure what we're going to do. We're going to buy this car seat or what? And get a new one? We just 
Later, Lita came with Francis to deal with the baby car seat, and when she came back, she informed us that Francis had received the car seat from the baggage terminal. It was time for us to set off for our next plane. For transport, we are not going to get the airport train. Instead, we caught the terminal transfer bus to the domestic terminal. When the bus left, we saw some things different in Sydney compared to Melbourne. We saw some skyscrapers which made it look like that we were in the city area, but we weren't. The plane we are catching is a VA846 plane to Melbourne departing at 14 o'clock. We arrived at the domestic terminal at 12.09, which means that we have 1 hour and 51 minutes until the plane departs. We had enough time left, so we stopped at the cafe to eat lunch. We finished our lunch at 13 o'clock, so now we only have an hour until this plane departs. When the family was waiting, Messina had to charge his camera because it was running low on batteries. Virgin Australia would now like to invite our business class guests, our economy ex guests, our platinum and gold members of Velocity, and our partner Airline Loyalty Programs travel to Melbourne. Unfortunately, he only charged his camera a little bit because the boarding call was announced seven minutes later. Messina had a bit of charge left in his camera to film little bits of the plane trip. Here's my back, Sadie. Here's my back, Sadie. The plane finally reached the runway where it will take off for Melbourne. now in the sky. Down below you can see bits of Sydney. a coconut cake. When Messina filmed the coconut cake, he had an iPod touch and used that to film what he was doing. He had enough battery on his iPod to film. Mm -hmm. 
During the flight, Massine decided to see what was out the window. After Messina looked out of the window, his family was being a bit funny. <laughs> After that happened, so we decided to get some snacks out of our bags. Out of the window are some impressive cloud formations. minutes of flying, we came to a bit of suburbia below. Soon after, the plane came a bit lower to the ground. We are almost at Melbourne Airport. After five minutes of taxiing, the plane finally arrived at our gate. Unfortunately, Messina's video camera ran out of batteries and his iPod had run out of space to film. Messina had nowhere to charge his camera at the airport and he had to wait until he got somewhere to charge his camera. When we left the terminal, we rode a taxi to a couple's house to stay for a few weeks. We also met Francis's mother and her husband at the airport to visit us too. Sedu has a friend named Rami Huel who has a wife called Batul Taleb. They are from Palestine and are best friends of ours. They have a baby son called Jad Huel, and I bet that the two little sisters were like playing with him. This house is only two bedrooms, but we will find out a way to try and stay with them. We had all of our suitcases piled in another room. Yeah, yeah really, really fatty, really unhealthy. Oh. Someone's loved that stuff. The family have made dinner for us and themselves to have. They have made green salad, chicken and rice, roast vegetables, and fried cauliflower. Talking down to these sort of Asian people, kind of not really understanding him, and then I do this Asian lady, and then the guy, the another guy was sort of just sort of being impatient with a Samoan dude who didn't speak English. So his daughter comes in and goes, "Oh, I'll translate for you." And we're standing. Meanwhile, we're standing there and seeing us going really loudly. <laughs> so why doesn't Australia like refugees? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, Masi and Sadu had to pack up their bags. They were going to stay at another friend's house. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'll just move. I just had to move the seat forward. <laughs> Rami has a truck that he drives to work every day, so he used it to drive us there. Um, guys, where are we going? It was a bit of a short ride and it did take long for us to get there. After 22 minutes, we are finally here after sunset. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. Hello! Hi. Hi. This Hi. is Russell oh. Watts, yes, one of Vanya and, and Yeti's long term <laughs> friends since the 1980s. He has heard yeah. all about us and was happy to let us oh, stay well, in his I'm house. I was very happy when I heard that Setu and Messina were coming to stay in my house for a few weeks. So I've known Setu's mum and dad for a long, 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 long time. And I was very happy to help out while they're looking for their own house and settling back into Australia. So all good, very good. And I hope they enjoy living in my house as well. Apparently, Russell has recently been to Samoa like us. And there are some things that he likes about Samoa. 
first visited there in 1984, so I've been going there for a long time. So I love the climate, I like the hot weather, I like the beaches, I like the people, I like the culture. But I think probably now, because I've lived there for four years, I've got lots of good friends there. So I really enjoy going back to visit my old friends. I also taught there for four years, so I know lots of the deaf students that I taught back in the 80s who are now grown up with their own families and their own kids. So I like to go and visit them and see how they're doing. It's also a great place for a holiday just to kick back down at the beach, swim, enjoy the warm weather. There's all sorts of things I really like about it. So I plan to go back nearly every year, hopefully, when I can, while I can. But yeah, there's lots of good things about Samoa. When Russell moved back to Melbourne, there were some things that he missed in Samoa. I really miss my friends when I come back. So that's the main reason I go, is to catch up with old friends. I also love just the fact that when I'm there, I'm on holiday, so I can kick back. I don't have to work. I can just relax and just enjoy the beauty of the place down at the beach somewhere. Even though Russell misses his friends and the beauty of the island, he had feelings when he moved back to Melbourne. Well, I also love Australia. I've been living back in Australia for the last six years, so I'm sort of used to it now. But when I was living in Samoa for two years, it was a little bit difficult when I first came back because I just missed the slower pace of Samoa and my friends there. And I think it's a slightly easier lifestyle living in Samoa. So yeah, when I first came back after being away for a couple of years, I certainly missed it a lot. And I especially found it really cold when I came back. So I came back in the middle of winter. It was horrible. Yeah, so I missed what I was doing there and I missed my friends and I think the easier lifestyle. But yeah, I've been back living in Australia now for six years, so I'm sort of used to it again. But you know, there's good and bad wherever you live. So I like Australia as well. So for the whole family, we packed up all of our things, we rode two planes and we are staying at two houses. It seems that there are a lot of things to do and organise, such as getting jobs, looking for houses and developing relationships. So in the next couple of days, there will be a lot of things to do. On day one, Missy and Sadie get picked up by Francis in the morning and she takes them to Rummy and Batul's house to hang out with them for a little bit. Afterwards, we all left the house to buy some more clothes at a clothing store called Converse because it is cold outside. Next is to Fitzroy High School to get Missy and Litara enrolled. When we came back, Sadie has to get a job and he was thinking of getting a mobile phone. A job will give us money for us to move into a new house and he needs a phone so his job employer can contact him. On day two, Missy and Sadie get picked up by Francis to get Sadie's friend at a shopping centre called Northland. They arrive at Rummy and Batul's house again and Sadie borrows Missy's computer to look for jobs. On day three, Missy and Sadie get picked up by Francis to hang out at Rummy and Batul's house and Sadie was still using Missy's computer, hoping to find a good job. After four days, Sadie has found a job. Also, we were wondering if we would have a good Christmas this year. If we don't, Litara has this to say. My idea of Christmas this year is the day before we're gonna get like heaps of chips and candy or I don't know, some nice stuff. And then on Christmas day, we're just gonna eat all that stuff and I hope we get a DVD player and we'll just watch videos and eat stuff and then at lunch we'll have something to eat and then for dinner we'll go to McDonald's. To try and get some things going, we got a small Christmas tree with colourful lights, baubles, stars and pieces of chocolate hung on the branches. And Francis brought us some food. It is Christmas Eve. Priscilla went out of Russell's house to take the train to Rummy and Batul's house. Today, we are going out to have lunch with Patricia, Francis's mum, and Ken, Patricia's husband. We are having lunch at a hotel. And when Rummy dropped us off out the front, Patricia and Ken were already here. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi Ken. Christmas. How are you? Oh, are you good? So lovely. <laughs> not bad. Hello. What do you mean, not bad? Hey. Hey. Yeah. You've got to be good. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> We all went inside the hotel and it was magnificent. There were lots of televisions, expensive lights, a food buffet and some lottery games. We needed to wait in some seats until Francis got our dining reservations checked in.
After 20 minutes of waiting, we went to our table, which was six. There were glasses and paper towels at the table already. We had some soft drinks and some other beverages. Is that, um, are those alcoholic drinks? Are those alcoholic drinks? That one's alcoholic. This one's not. Everybody got their own food from the buffet. Now, unlike everyone else, look at what Messina is having. He is having chips with beef lasagna, roast potato, pepperoni pizza, fried fish, and lettuce, all served at once, sprinkled with parmesan on top. Messina also decided to sprinkle some pepper too. I'll drink half of it and then I'll give it to you. Okay, what about that one? Um, that's mine. I haven't finished it yet. Excuse me, no, that's mine. Everyone was grossed out at Messina's plight but he didn't care. After lunch, we all got dessert. Ken and Patricia got a creme brulee with apple crumble and ice cream. Francis and Lita got ice cream like Vanya and Tiva, but with cones. But what Messina is having is this. He is having strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla ice cream with slices of three types of cakes and brownies sprinkled with caramel and cream sauce and dashed with four leaves of mint. And everyone was even more gross out at what Messina was eating. Yes, please. <laughs> After eating our foods, Patricia and Ken got us presents. Marceline got some sweets, an iPod charger, and a collection of three books, which was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Litara got some drinking straws and novels, and everyone else got some sweets too. There was also a flying ball. After we looked at our presents, we left the hotel and we called in for a taxi to take us back to Rummy and Batool's home, which arrived minutes later. We hanged around for a little bit and everyone had a lot of thoughts about the hotel. It was fun when we went to eat food and stuff. It was cool how we could get our own plate of food and we could get whatever we want and then it had like lunch and desserts and it was nice that like Nana came with us. I thought that going to the hotel was great. I liked the kinds of food they had there, especially when I get to serve it on my own and eat all of them whenever I felt like it. I get to eat all the foods whenever I like. Oh, I really liked it. I've never really been to a buffet before. So it was kind of cool. Of course, it was lovely to see Nana and Ken because, you know, we've been in Samoa for a couple of years, but it's a really nice way to see them for Christmas considering we're all sort of living with Rami and Batool and you and Sudu were at Russell's and... No, I really enjoyed doing the buffet. I like going back with my plate and getting more food. <laughs> so it was good. And the food was nice. I want to go back. I want to take Sedu. Afterwards, we went home by car to have dinner with Sedu and go to sleep. The whole family stayed in their house for a while too. The special day is tomorrow. Good morning, it's Christmas time. Everybody in the family is up from their beds in the lounge room. There are presents underneath the little Christmas tree and there are things inside our stockings. Once the little girls opened their stockings, it was time to open presents. Okay, thanks. Ooh, it's a DVD. When the little girls were opening their presents, Masina was rummaging for his presents. Watch, and it lights up. Masina! What? I'm gonna open them. You're not allowed to go and open them. You have to open them in here this year, okay? Yeah, you motherfucker! Messina should open these presents with the family because it's nice for all of us to have the kids open their presents together and then it's not just for us, it's so the other his brother, his sisters, sorry, can join in with the present opening and it's a family Christmas morning thing. Yes, that is the problem. We like to see the reactions when you open your presents and we've had a couple of years where you've just gone off and opened your presents in front of your camera and we kind of miss everything and we don't really get to see. Yeah. Bad That's just... <laughs> <laughs> What Messina got for Christmas were DVDs. 
There was Jumanji, both 1995 and 2018, White Chicks, and the Scary Movie Trilogy. And what Miss Nia got in this stocking was a Toblerone chocolate, peanut M&M's, Snickers pods, Cadbury Crunchy Honeycomb chocolate bar, Reese's peanut butter chocolate, and chocolate coins. After Miss Nia opened his Christmas things, he went to the kitchen to get breakfast. He is having crunchy nuts, with Maltesers, and coffee. After breakfast, Francis was making stuffed mushrooms for our Christmas lunch. Also, some of our relatives came to visit us. This is Masinha Matua Taule Alo. And this is Christine Taule Alo. Masinha is Sedu's middle brother, and they have two children who are Clarissa and Cooper Taule Alo. They both bought us presents. They brought Masinha a Cadbury Favorites box and a card with an iTunes card inside. The favourites box had little verses of chocolates, all manufactured by Cadbury. The girls also got presents, which were board games and coloured pencils. After hanging out, the family packed up their things. We all said goodbye and wished them a Merry Christmas. Have a nice lunch. Yeah, you too. We're just chilling. We're chilling here. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy. We love you. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. You too. Then, Sedu went to Skype his mother on the phone. Masinha also talked to her too. Oh. Oh my god, the more some of the mornings have been absolutely freezing. Like, yeah, very yeah, as as you know, we had the first day we were here we went out and bought shoes and socks and jackets and bloody Yeah, it's been cold. Well, I, I found that it, it was the, it was that rapid change in temperature that was just a, a, a quite sort of physically unbearable. Yeah. 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 He had some ginger beer. After two hours, Christmas dinner is ready. We had a wonderful Christmas time and I have something to tell you guys. When we moved back to Melbourne because of our living conditions, I thought that we wouldn't have a good Christmas. And yes, I'm talking about Masina Tawla Olo narrating this documentary. But after I've seen what my family have brought from the shops, like the special treats in the cupboard, the small Christmas tree, I realised that we might have a good Christmas, even though we are not in our own house. When I woke up in the morning, I was impressed with how the presents have been put underneath the tree and what things have been put in our stockings. So we did have a good Christmas after all. I noticed that when you are in a situation where you just moved in and don't have a house, you can still have or celebrate a Merry Christmas, even though Tara thought of eating at McDonald's. I thought it was nice. It was different. We've had a couple of different Christmases recently, I guess, because being in Samoa. But it was nice. I felt we got a bit of a Christmas vibe going. I was a little bit worried because we were in separate places. So it was really, it was kind of good luck that we got to be able to all stay at Russell's place because they went away over Christmas. And just being able to get the little Christmas tree and some lights. And for me, it, it definitely felt Christmassy. It wasn't our usual Christmas, but 
There was definitely a Christmas vibe. I really enjoyed the day. It was really nice. Christmas last year was great. We were staying in different places. Me and Marcina were staying at Russell and Judy Burns' house in Brunswick. And the gang was staying at Alabama and Batals, out in the bloody water gardens. So we weren't seeing each other in a while because I was working. So yeah, it was nice. We had a few days off for Christmas and nice for us to all be able to hang out. Also, Russell went up to Gippsland, so it was nice we could all hang out for a couple of days and just relax. It was good too. Francis tried to sort of sort out presents for the kids because it had been a crazy time after we came back. House hunting and job hunting and everything. So it was nice to have a bit of family time just to focus on the family and the kids, you know, kids get it excited about their presence and everything. Yeah, that was really good. Had a nice meal. Yeah, it was probably our first real being able to sit down together as the family since we got back to Australia, which is what we got here on the 9th. And so, yeah, in about three weeks where everything just been pretty crazy. But yeah, it was good. Good couple of days hanging out for Christmas. It was okay. I mean, like, it was nice with the presents and my family, but I was sick at the time and it wasn't that nice. So, yeah. We had a good Christmas. There was ice cream in the freezer and I decided to have some. Along with Bailey's Irish cream. My peanut M&Ms I got in my stocking. As well as a flake from my Capri favourites box and some milk. Having dessert is something which made me happy. I thought that the ice cream made this Christmas more special, which it did because of the flavours. I thought today's Christmas was very special. Merry Christmas, everyone. If you thought this documentary is over, it's not. We are riding in a taxi van and all of my things are packed inside, even the Christmas tree. Litara, Vanya, Tiva and Francis are there too. What is happening is that Messina is moving out of Russell's home to live at Rummy and Batul's home. Even if it sounds like there is not enough room for Messina to sleep, Rummy and Batul have left their home to go on a road trip to South Australia, so Messina will sleep in their room. We arrived at their house shortly after the taxi trip. What's on pack Francis? Messina, grab a bag. You've got a spare pair of hands. Grab a bag. I'm just going. Alright, Messina and Litari, you guys help me bring this stuff in, please. Messina was staying at their house for a while. Messina had to sleep on the couch with a sleeping bag and a pillow. On New Year's Day, Sodu came to stay at our house for one night and the family had brought takeaway dinner from the shops to celebrate New Year 2019. Messina, that's yours there. No, okay, thanks. What Messina got for dinner was a parmigiana with chips. Wow. That was wonderful. All of the food was awesome and it was a good way to celebrate New Year. Not just that, but something else good came across. The family had brought cookies and cream ice cream from the shops for dessert. Messina was going to have some, along with some lemon sprite soda. When I had my ice cream, I thought that we had the best new year ever, just like Christmas. Happy 2019, everyone.
Three days later, Rummy and Batul were back from the road trip in South Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So this means that Messina has to move out of their home and live with Sedu at the hotel. I was packing my technology, my clothes and my bathroom users in my bags. After packing up, Messina and Francis went in a taxi to the train station. He was carrying his bags with him and Francis had brought some plates, forks, knives, spoons and bowls made out of white hard plastic. When Messina got on the train, he had to carry three bags with him because Francis had also brought food for him and Sedu to eat at the hotel. I arrived at my station in one hour and I met Sedu outside. He helped me with some of the bags and we all went off to the hotel he is staying in. After eight minutes of walking, we arrived at the hotel. It is a big yellow building with three levels and under powerful surveillance. This is Sedu's room. It is very small, which has a sink, a two-person bed, a small fridge, a television, a small window, and a bathroom, which looks like a lavatory. This is Sedu's suitcase and bags, which are all full of clothes. We stayed at the hotel for a while, but we still kept in touch with Francis on his phone. Mussolini still had his own breakfast, which was wheat bix, and he had a bit of a lunch, which was salt crackers with sliced cheese. When Seto is back from work, we still had dinner. We had some chicken sandwiches with cheese and lettuce using Turkish bread. On some times, we also had dinner at restaurants too. We are going to be in this hotel for a while, and hopefully something good happens. Surprisingly, as three days later, something good happened. When we came to Rummy and Batul's house, Frances announced that she had got a house and we were all very happy. She had brought corn chips and cheese to make nachos to celebrate. When we started eating, Francis announced that they would move to our new home on the 14th of January. We all had feelings when we heard the news. Pretty average, you know, we come to Australia, you would think that we would get a house, so yeah, I was happy. I felt happy about hearing the fact that we are going to move to another house and because we haven't been in a house for like a month. Really relieved. A lot of us, we had to stay in different places. And it's hard staying in other people's houses when you Rami and Batul were really cool to stay with for the Francis and the girls, but you know, it's, they've got a very small house and it's hard to be able to relax with your family when you're in someone else's space. It was like that also for me and Cena at uh, Russell's. Yeah, and Russell was, and Judy were very welcoming to us, but you know, you feel a bit weird having your kids and you don't, don't have anywhere for them to stay. So yeah, it was a big relief when we got the house and we were also pleased because this was the house that Frances wanted us to get. And so she was really, it was really good that we were able to get that house. So yeah, massive relief. Very happy. I think everyone was happy for us to get our house so we could have somewhere to stay. We were all feeling excited that we finally have a house to move into. Even though we celebrate in a small home, we have a bright and awesome future ahead of us. We all have a lot of moving and packing to do, but only when the special day comes. The day finally came. We were all going to our new house. Me and Sadu are moving out of our hotel room and we have packed up our bags and suitcases. When we left the hotel, Francis was waiting outside in the van and said it had checked out the hotel room. Alright Francis, I can feel it. Like. 
After minutes of driving, we arrived at the new house. It has only one floor and a shade for the car. It is made out of bricks, the roof made out of wood and tiles, two windows at the front with a big tree in the way. Inside the house is a big room on the left in the front door with another big room ahead which also has a kitchen. Here is a room which is going to be Messina's bedroom and along the hall are some other rooms. This is a master bedroom with two wardrobes and a bathroom with a toilet and shower. There is also another toilet here and another bathroom nearby. After those places, there is another bedroom with a closet hidden beneath the door and there is a studio room with big shelves and a sliding door. This is also another bedroom which also has a closet and right here is a washing bay where the washing machine will go. Outside the back door is the backyard with a shade and inside here is the garage where we are going to put all of our stuff once we move them in here. Out the back is a little bit of nature with some plants and some big trees in the very back of the fence. Over the fence you can see a bit of the highway with the traffic going. Soon we will go to our storage space where we will bring all of our things to our house. The next day, Francis rented an empty truck. Me, Seru and her are going to use it to transport all of our furniture. We drove off into the country. It was a long drive, but after an hour, we arrived at Patricia's house. I would be up the last time here, yeah. I know. Oh, you're videoing everything. Long time truck drive. See you. We had to go to Patricia's house because she has a friend who has all of our stuff inside a garage. They took us there by making us follow their ute with our truck. It took only two minutes and at first glance it looked like the house had no garage. But when we went along the driveway, we saw that there was a little garage with a big sheep wrapped around something, which might be our stuff we are going to take home. Once we took it off, we saw that it was our stuff. Some of our things were covered in cobwebs. Everything is Everything is covered in cobwebs. They're covered in cobwebs. Step away from them, they can kill you. Step away from them, they can kill you. We started packing up our things, but because our things were at the bottom of the hill, we had to load them onto the ute so we could bring our things up to the truck for loading. We worked for three hours and I wasn't allowed to film because I had to help out with the packing. We were almost done unpacking the garage, but there was no room in the truck for more things. However, one day, we would come back here to bring the other things to our house. When we brought the truck back, we were all tired from the lifting and loading work we have done, and it was also a very hot day. The next day, Francis brought the truck in the driveway and the gate and garage were open. We are going to unload the truck and bring things inside the house. We put our stuff either in the garage or in the house. After four hours of unloading, the truck was empty and Francis was out cleaning the sofa. Inside the house, some things have been set up. There was a dining table, Messina's room and other bedrooms. night time, more boxes are inside and the family is now together, having pizzas for dinner at the table. So 
that is us moving to our new house. It was a lot of hard work and organising, but we succeeded. We've all had to go through a series of tough and stressful situations and it was a bit good for us in some cases. We still have a lot of setting up to do as there are still boxes and furniture everywhere. As for us, we now know what it is like to try and move back to Melbourne. It was a busy few days. It was kind of exhausting. It was super hot the day we took all of our stuff out of storage. We only had a certain amount of time, even though we did have the truck for two days. Luckily, we had Marcina who helped us out, which made a huge difference. When we put all our stuff in storage, it was just me and Seto, so it was much, much more hard work. Having Marcina was a huge help. And also having the truck for an extra day meant that rush as much. We could pack up the truck, bring it to the new house and unpack it the next day. We didn't have to unpack it that night and have the truck back the next morning. But it was awesome. I love our house. It's the house I wanted. I was super happy and super excited. Not as bad as I thought it would be. There was a couple of really hot days. We were doing the actual move, but we got Marcina to come and help us when we had the truck. It was a big help having Marcina help us because he's strong and much easier for me and seeing her do it than it was for me and Francis to do it. Yeah, it, it was a lot, I, I built it up in my mind that it was going to be really hard, but I think it was a lot easier for us to move our stuff out of the garage than it was for us to move our stuff into the garage when we moved everything in two years ago. Yeah, and it was once we got our stuff and then the next day we were able to move our stuff in and got the electricity on and the day after that the, gir the girls moved in. It was, yeah, it was great. It was good to have the family under one roof again. The little girls were all excited about the new house. Anya initially hated it when, before we moved in, but as soon as we got electricity, she decided she loved it. So that was good. And it was, yeah, it was really good for her to have everyone in the same place again and start to try and finally be in a position where we could start to organize our lives, and organize our routine and everything. So yeah, it was uh, really good. Cool. It took a while for us to bring our stuff in and it was cool to see everything that was in storage and like all the stuff that we put back in and like, you know, sort of memories I guess. For me personally, it felt a bit struggling moving back to Melbourne when we tried settling into the other homes. Cool. Cool. Sam was cool. Sam was cool. We have thrown a lot of effort with our organising and we have been making good progress. We still have a bit of moving to do, which will hopefully be over soon.